In today's episode, we have the father of sales development, David Delaney. He's the CEO of TenBound and has over 20 plus years of experience in sales development. So you're not going to want to miss it. On today's episode, learn the current SDR trends David has seen through COVID and learn how you as an SDR can make an impact to help align sales and marketing. Your success is our success. So let's get started. From the heart of Silicon Valley in beautiful San Francisco, California, welcome to the SDR Live yeah, podcast yeah, yeah, with yeah, Marcos yeah. and Andy. Coming in. Coming David, in. welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm excited to talk with you guys. Awesome. I, I know Andy and I are like super excited to, to have you on the show. I mean, it's been you know, one of those like A-list guests that we needed to get. And now we have the man himself. Um, really, we want to learn about some of the SDR trends that are happening and, and what's going on. But I think it'd be first to, to give the audience a little introduction on, on who you are, um, if they're fairly new to the SDR world. Yeah. Well, again, thanks for having me. It's, it's, this is going to be fun. I'm excited. Um, so yeah, I'm David Delaney. I run TenBound, uh, which is a research and advisory firm that's focused on sales development. And um, I've been in and around sales and marketing and sales development for 20 years. So I'm <laughs> really getting up there. Um, wow. Somebody called me the grandfather of sales development, which pissed me off. I, I'm, I'm <laughs> the father. I'm still a, just a father. Um, but uh, I, I sold sales training for about seven years is the first big chunk of my career. Um, and so essentially selling to sales leaders and, and taking the training. And that was a great experience. And then I got into the tech world and um, was one of the first salespeople at Glassdoor when they were just going to market mm, and worked wow. with a few of the executives there to start the first sales development program. And this is going back like, I don't know, nine or 10 years. Um, when you know Salesforce uh, was doing sales development, and I thought, hey, this is a perfect fit for this type of sale that we had. So we started that for that um, program and um, stayed in sales development for a number of years, and then started Tenbound as sort of a uh, a way to um, really focus the industry and kind of bring it under an umbrella. And so that's what I've been doing for the last few years. Wow, I mean, awesome. Incredible. You probably have a lot of like wisdom just from starting at Glassdoor, right? And just trial by error, right? <laughs> um, yeah. So, you know, one of the first questions that we had is, you know, we're in an unprecedented time, right? Through COVID, things are changing. Maybe there's some SDRs out there that have gotten laid off, right? And not sure, you know, what they're doing. How have you seen the SDR landscape really, you know, changed um, throughout this time? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a tough time, man. I mean, it's, um, you know, there's, there's a few sort of never ending truths that I'm, I'm bullish on sales development. I don't think it's going anywhere. And I don't, I don't think it's going to be um, <laughs> replaced by robots anytime soon. Um, I think that there's a big future in the profession. Um, and I'm obviously very optimistic about it, because it's what we do every day, right? And what Same. we study. Um, but um, you know, since this crisis has happened, um, obviously we've seen a lot of layoffs, a lot of people um, running companies are looking for places where they can save money quickly. And unfortunately, uh, you know, through no fault of the teams, they look at the sales development program and see if there's a way that they can make some cuts. So we got, we got hurt by that, um, but bigger picture, the bottom line is that even with all the technology, even with all the automation and all these cool tools that we have, you still have to have a human being involved in the process. And now I think even more important than ever is that human touch that you can put on the, the whole process of like engaging with new customers going outbound or qualifying through inbound leads. Like the, 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 um, the, the technology is not at the point where we can be completely replaced. And that's a good thing, um, you know, for people that are looking for an entry point into the tech industry or, you know, their sales development program just got cut. So they're, they're out looking for a job right now. There is still a ton of opportunity in this and it's going to be that way for the foreseeable future. So I, I'm, I'm very optimistic on where it's going to go. 
I mean, that's, that's super insightful. And it, it really, you know, just hearing your words, right? I mean, I know you want to be called the, the father, but I, you are the legend, right, in this space. And to hear that, um, you know, the opportunity is still there. We need that human touch actually makes me even more bullish about the role, right? Because a lot of times I hear this thing of, you know, automation, right? What happens, you know, if, uh, you know, a robot can take your job? I think I, I had a conversation with a VP of marketing. This was, uh, I think, two months ago. And he was like, yeah, I don't think SDRs are going to be there very soon. <laughs> and I was just like hurt. Um, so have you started to see that trend as well? I mean, so, so think of it this way, like not, notwithstanding the crisis that we're going through right now, um, you know, businesses have to have a three to four X pipeline at all times. Um, you know, otherwise the, the sales team is just not going to be able to produce the revenue that the company needs. So that's, that's just a, um, uh, like it's an undying truth, no matter what happens in the overall industry, like you, you have to have pipeline. Okay, mm -hmm. so if we have to have pipeline, then someone's gonna have to generate the pipeline. Like the marketing team can generate leads and interest and, and um, all, all the different things that they do. The sales team can take appointments and, and run them through a process to create the revenue, but there's gotta be that connective tissue. And, um, you know, especially now that people are getting more and more automated messages um, and there's, there's not a lot of customization. I mean, people are just becoming immune to that. So yeah. where it leaves us as sales development professionals is an amazing opportunity because, you know, the more savvy that you are um, about creating messages and getting out there and talking to people and, um, you know, the more value you can bring because, yeah, computers can't do it yet. You're so right about that kind of uh, it, the SDR role is still much needed to generate that pipeline because there's only so much that marketing can do to, ge to generate leads, to, to create that demand. And as we're on the topic of kind of demand gen, as, as well as marketing, I know that alignment, uh, quote unquote alignment was kind of the 2019 sales development conferences kind of overarching theme. I, I'm curious, how can entry level SDRs kind of forge that alignment kind of between the organization of marketing as well as uh, the sales development team as well as the sales team as well as the sales operations team yeah i mean it, it's a that, it's a tough order right because um you know when you're hired as a as a sales development rep it's it's a very specialized position and you know the 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 higher up on the food food chain that you go in the company um the more they're looking at that position as just like you were hired to do this job, which is to contact people, have conversations and set appointments, you know? And then, so it's like, how do, you, how do you expand beyond that and really show value, which you can absolutely do. One thing to think about that, that we, we start with when we do SDR training is um, learn as much as you possibly can about the target market that you're going out to um, and who, they those actual people are as far as the they call them like personas you know um what who are these people what what are they concerned with what what keeps them up at night what are their pain points and what's their vocabulary right become an expert in in that um and and through that process you're going to be picking up trends you're going to be picking up pain points you're going to be like picking up intel that you can then bring back to the, the marketing team, the ops team, the sales team, and, and br bring them some fresh information that, that, you, that you found out about. Um, that is super valuable because if you think about it, all those different people are very heads down doing their job. They're not, they're not out in the market like we are. And so they, 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 they need that fresh information and we can bring that. And we, we can bring that with total credibility. Even if you're only six months into the job, but you're really focused on that industry and, and the people that you're, that you're studying and you pick up a piece of information and you share that, that's super valuable, even if you're brand new at the company. That's what I was actually starting to see as well when I was at SDR at Optimizely. Um, as I started to become more tenured, um, I would say early on, it, it was pretty tough for me just from a persona standpoint, but um, 
once you like get into the role, I'd say like five, six months in, you really have a good understanding. And what I ended up starting to do is pair with our marketing team to be an asset, right? And I think when when you can make that bridge or make that gap, because there's always like this conversation, right? Like, should SDRs be in marketing? Should they be in sales? What I started to do is like, why don't we just bridge that together and say, hey, I'll give you the direct insights that I'm seeing. And then maybe that's going to help you generate more leads, which will help me from like an inbound perspective, generate more pipeline. Um, so curious, like when you're having these conversations, I noticed you have, uh, you've been talking to a lot of CMOs, but also people on the sales side as well. Is there like an overlapping theme that you're starting to see on what makes like a good sales marketing function? Yeah. I mean, th so there has to be a, um, a commitment, you know, to have a, have alignment at the higher level and you can, you can pick up clues if people haven't made that commitment and they're very insular, um, you get a lot of, I mean, you just pick up a vibe or people actually are, you know, political within the company and they're saying like marketing sucks or sales never closes any of the leads. If you start to pick up some of that, some of that vibe, then um, you're going to have to work a lot harder to, to create the connection as a sales development rep because you're, you're, you're going against the tide. Um, on the flip side, if you're at a well-functioning company and people are getting along and there's a vibe that the sales leaders and the marketing leaders are talking and they're meeting, you're in, you're in really good shape to make a difference at that company as a sales development person um, because you, you, you are that connective tissue. I was going to say, like, just to add on, uh, the SDR being kind of that value added, almost not like a subject matter expert, but being in the front lines, being in the trenches day to day, you really get to understand like what the, the prospect, what the customers are thinking about. So like you can not only add value and bridge that gap between sales and marketing, but also like the product team, as well as like operations, just to help them understand like, no, this is, this is potentially something that, uh, should be on our product roadmap because all of our customers are, are hearing it. And I know at inside view, like that's something that we, we do have kind of like a knowledge share between product marketing as well as the SDR team. hundred percent. And I think, um, you know, it's really easy to get intimidated when you come in as a new SDR because um, you know, you, you like quick ex example is like you, you interview at a bunch of different companies, um, you, you like them and you get a job somewhere and you're like, okay, like, what are we selling? You know, what's the product <laughs> like, um, and all this stuff. And I mean, it's intimidating because now, now it's like, okay, here's some training, go call people that have 20 years experience in your industry. And you're just like, dude, that is so, you know, it's, it's like, where do I even start? And so what I tell people is, um, even if you don't know much about the industry or even if you're not super excited about the industry, it's okay. All you have to do is start, um, you know, go, going out and reading the blogs that your customers read. Um, watch the webinars that your customers watch. Um, you know, sign up for newsletters that your customers are on and just start getting that vocabulary. So you're not just a, a pesty person who doesn't know anything about their business, you actually have some of that vocabulary and you kind of understand their world a little bit. And, and then from that point, you're, you're off to the races. You, you, you'll become a more valuable sales rep. If you want to get into sales, you'll become a more valuable marketer ops person because you know the industry that you're calling into. So that's, that's interesting. That kind of leads me into like the, the various resources that you actually have on, on 10 bound. Um, and was wondering if you could at least show the audience some of those things um, as there potentially might be a new rep or maybe they're a little bit more tenured, thinking about management, thinking about potentially becoming like an AE or CSM. Can you show us that? Yeah, man, absolutely. And it's interesting because you, from a training perspective, if you're an SDR, you, you come in and you've got your whole world of um, like the industry that we're talking about and trying to understand who, who the hell it is that we're actually calling. Um, there's me. I can actually chat to myself. Um, <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> um, so, so you've got, you've got that whole, that, that's like, that's like a, 
a lifetime of knowledge that you have to get. You got to learn the vocabulary and the personas and their pain points and all that stuff. And then on the other hand, you also have like just the soft skills that you have to learn. How, how do you talk to people? How do you have a conversation? How do you write an email and all that stuff? I mean, that's a whole other bunch of stuff that you got to learn. Right. And, um, and so we, we've tried to um, compile as much information as possible from different points of view at, at 10 bound to help with sales development. Um, whether you're a rep, um, whether you're a manager running the team or whether you're an executive, like over overseeing it. Right. And so there's a few sections I definitely want to point out, um, get on the email newsletter um, so that you're getting posted on, on everything that comes out and, um, and definitely check out the different resources. Like um, we're always posting blogs, um, podcasts about sales dev and webinars, and we have a, a bright talk channel. So there's a lot of, self-study that you can do on there. And, um, and then we've got a bunch of events, like there's a, the virtual conferences are coming up, which are free. And then we do a couple, um, I think that's where I met you guys in San Francisco and yep. in, in NYC, where you can actually meet other sales development leaders. Um, and then, you know, obviously all of our training and consulting services are here. It's how we pay the bills. So definitely hit me up about that. Um, and, uh, and then a ton of research, you know, I mean, we're, we're known for the market map, um, which brings together all the major players in the, in the sales development space, um, under one, one, um, landscape. And this is version five. This is before COVID-19. So it'd be interesting to see how this plays out. Um, wow, but look at is, that. I know it's crazy, dude. I mean, we could have a podcast <laughs> about this. <laughs> quick question, right. quick question. How many companies would you say are on this? If you had to guess, I, I always wanted to know you, you actually yeah. might know the question on the back of your mind, but like, I'm just super it's, curious about that. It's crazy. I mean, actually it's funny cause it's funny you mentioned that because people ask me that and, and we say it's, it's, it's right around 300 different companies. Um, oh. <laughs> and, um, you know, the, the next question that we always get is like, how do I double click on the quadrant and like learn more about the companies? And so um, we, we developed a, a directory um, as well, which um, right now it's kind of version one, but there's about, there's about 150 companies in there um, that are off of the market map um, and, and it's growing, you know, every day. So like, you know, if, if the company has gone on and, and put in um, information about their, and just bring up like sales law, for example, um, oh, nice. there, there, there could be some information and there's probably about a hundred companies or so in there. Um, and then we're going to be releasing version two of this, which is much more user friendly. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff. And I think thing number one for SDRs is to learn about that overall industry that they're calling into. But then a quick behind that is like, your skills as a sales development professional. Um, so hopefully there's some stuff on there that could help. Right. And, and just kind of a quick note to the audience, because I've, I've been a big fan of 10 bound have been living. I've been uh, listening to your episodes for a while. And just a quick tip, if uh, you're kind of been fortunate enough to be in an industry where you, uh, your personas include sales development representatives, SDR managers, as well as revenue operations uh, managers, et cetera, listen to to David Delaney's podcast, I'll, I've actually used a lot of the, the nuggets that he has shared when he brings on like revenue operations managers. And I've used his podcast to just send out a personalized message of saying, hey, I heard you on David Delaney's podcast. You were sharing about this. Very interested to start a conversation. There you go. I mean, yeah, that's that's awesome. Um, you know, we, we definitely... Um, try to look at it like from a holistic perspective, like at the end of the day, it's building pipeline and um, setting up demos and then closing deals, you know? And it's like, there, dude, there's a million different like parts of that puzzle um, that you can bring in. So yeah, the, the different people that you talk to is it's amazing. And I bet you're just like, <clears throat> excuse me, you're, you're just learning so much to yourself, right? Um, and so maybe uh, this is kind of starting our, our more of our rapid fire questions. But the first one I would like to start off with is just like general advice that you would have 
for SDRs, and maybe we start with those that are starting their career, and then those that uh, could potentially be more tenured that had the chance to become a, an AAE or a CSM or, or really go to the next level, but the whole COVID situation just, you know, uh, I wouldn't say crush their dreams, but put them in a standstill, right? Um, I know a lot of people are asking about that. Yeah, I mean, so there's so many, there's so many things. I mean, one, one is don't forget if, if you were in um, sales development and you learned some skills about prospecting and reaching out to people and get, giving a good contextualized message so that you could set up an appointment, don't forget about those, you know, when you're, when you're out, you know, interviewing and looking for jobs because those skills are very applicable. Um, you know, you, the, the worst thing that you can do is just go into like a black hole of applying online for a job because there's probably like a hundred other people that are doing that. Um, so you got to be, a, you know, smart about it. Like, um, you know, leverage relationships off of LinkedIn, take people out for coffee, um, you know, try to use some of those skills that you had to, to land a job. And then, you know, just realize there still is a need for this and you will get back, you know, into it if you are smart about it relatively quickly. Because again, you got to have three to four X pipeline or else you're toast as a company. And they're going to realize pretty quickly, like, hey, we don't have enough SDRs, we need more. And you're going to get back in the door and be able to go out through the organization. Interesting. Um, just out of curiosity, from the three to four X pipeline, um, does that come from research? Um, I, I, I was unfamiliar with that, that stat. Yeah, I mean, it's, well, it's kind of a rule of thumb. Um, okay. I mean, just, you know, if you're in a sales organization, um, the VP of sales is going to be inspecting pipeline and they're going to expect that each of the reps has 3X to 4X pipeline. Um, okay. it's, just, it's just what you have to have. So, so right now, if you think about it, like the, if there's not an SDR support, then the AE is supposed to be doing that all themselves. And, um, you know, as an AE, you've got a different job, right? You've got to yeah. do demos, close deals, like do all the stuff that it takes to bring it in. So when are you going to do that? Right. Um, so it's 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 a struggle. I, I'm starting to see some of that, too, just as being an AE myself. Right. It's like, well, at the end of the day, if you're not generating the pipeline, how can you close it? You know, so like it goes hand in hand with that. Um, yeah. So next question from like a rapid fire standpoint would be, you know, do you love to win or do you hate to lose? <laughs> Uh, you know, I love to win, I, I would say, um, you know, at, at this point, it's like, I've taken so many hits. And <laughs> like, um, I, I just feel like, you know, uh, at this point, it used to take me, you know, a week to get over something. And then uh, I and then it took a, a, a it got down to a day, and then it took an hour. And now it's like, so, you know, somebody could just like <laughs> punch me in the face and I just be like, okay, <laughs> what, what's, what's next? Um, and nobody tests me on that one, but I, I definitely do. One of the, there, there's a lot of disadvantages of like just growing older and, and um, having a lot of experience. But one of the advantages is that you just get over things a lot faster naturally mm -hmm. because you're just, there's pattern recognition and you're just like, this is not important and you can bounce back. Um, so anyway, so that, that's definitely <laughs> something. I'm interested. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure many of our viewers can, and SDRs can, can kind of really resonate with that just because we face so much rejection on our kind of daily routine of outbounding email prospecting, et cetera. People telling us, no, the faster we learn how to move on and like we learn that experience, iterate from it, then we can get to that win that we can embrace. Yeah. I mean, dude, there's, there's people out there that just naturally move on, you know, and, and they're, they're just bulletproof, you know, that's just part of their personality. But for me, I mean, it, it was a really hard struggle. I mean, I just, I, and, and still, you know, sometimes it takes longer than others, <laughs> but um, I just took everything personally and, you know, internalized everything and any rejection was a rejection of me. And mm -hmm. it definitely took, you know, 20 years of being in sales and business in general to, to finally just realize like, dude, nobody cares about me. Like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they don't give a shit. Yeah. I mean, they, they're, they're worried about themselves and their own exactly. problem. And if I, if I'm not adding value immediately, then I'm gone. 
you know? And, and so now it's just like, whatever. <laughs> I love that. On that note, um, what are some books that have kind of uh, molded your philosophy of, on how you lead your life? Yes, I, I love that question. So, um, you know, the first one that I thought of was um, by uh, Jim Rohn. It's called The Seasons of Life. And um, Jim Rohn, it, you, you can, he's kind of a funny looking guy and, and from the 80s, but uh, you can get, get him on YouTube. He, he's really uh, a great communicator and he's, he's, um, a, he's, he's the basis of a lot of like self-improvement uh, other authors um, that have come out. And the seasons of life is just, uh, it goes through how um, life is like the seasons, I guess. <laughs> and and uh, how, you know, you, you, how to take advantage or survive during different seasons of life. And um, for example, right now we are in a deep, deep freeze of winter. And um, it's a natural process and, and spring will come eventually. Um, so I love that book. Um, Next one that I had was called Rich Dad, Poor Dad, um, which is almost like a cliche. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> Major. I mean, I read that 20 years ago, and um, I'm just um, almost like a cult-like follower of um, Robert Kiyosaki. And, and I, I just absolutely think that that's a, an eye-opening book. Um, the last one that I had is... Um, it's not an, I'm not advocating for the author because I know that he does a lot of creepy things, but there's a book called <laughs> the 10X Rule. <laughs> Is that um, Grant Cardone? Cardone. <laughs> I didn't even want to say. <laughs> <laughs> Love him or hate him, you know, he's, he's a polarizing figure. But, um, you know, I, I, when I read that, I realized that, um, you know, hey, it's, it's, it, if, if you're not as successful as you need to be, you may, you may need to look at your work ethic. And, and just realize like um, that, that you're not putting in enough cycles on something and you're giving up too easily. And um, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, it's, it, maybe you need to put in 10 times more effort than you have been. And, and you know, you kind of take a look at things that went sideways and where you didn't get the results that you need. And it's just like, did I put in enough effort? Um, so that was, that was a, I mean, it sounds super basic, but it was kind of a, like, whoa, okay. That's something interesting to think about. Wow. So we got Seasons of Life, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Uh, I've actually read one of the three, so I'm going to have to pick up the other two. The 10X rule is super interesting because I've listened to Grant Cardone on, on YouTube, and his philosophy is very you know, interesting. That kind of leads me to like my next question, which is you know, people out in our audience, they're hungry right, for success. Right? Uh, they might have just started uh, the SDR role, from college, right? And they want to make sure they make a good, you know, impression on their boss or uh, whoever it might be. But, you know, what advice would you give to somebody that's potentially looking to pursue a career similar to yours? Yeah, I mean, so, you know, like I said, I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad 20 years ago, and I kind of sat on the information to some extent um, for a long time, because I had come up in the world of working for a company and, you know, that security of, working for a company, getting a regular paycheck, a 401k, health insurance. And I, I just had no idea that anything else existed. I mean, and when, when I entered the workforce, it was a long time before like, you know, digital nomads and work from anywhere <laughs> and everything that we have now. There wasn't as much um, availability of, of going the entrepreneur route. And the reason I just bring this up is um, I, I once I once I went into entrepreneurship and I understood what it meant, um, it, it, it's like I kind of kicked myself for not doing it a long, long time ago. And and um, mm -hmm. I wanted to do it. I was kind of an, a wannabe, but I just was very afraid to just be out in the wilderness and like die of starvation. I think that subconsciously it was there. So I wish that I had become an entrepreneur a long time ago because I just love it and, and it's been a great experience for me. Uh, that's almost similar to Andy and I and why we started this. We're yeah. almost in the same boat. Like we <laughs> struggle with, I guess, our own worst enemy, which is ourself, right? This ability of like, oh my gosh, should we take that chance? What, what happens if we put ourselves out there? Um, but, you know, we're here today. You know, I, I think what what I've taken from you is like, it's not really like how you start, but it's the, the journey, 
right? That you take, the, the people that you meet, the, the relationships that you build. And so I just wanted to say just like from us, like, thank you, because you've been a great inspiration to us. That's awesome, dude. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely like um, hindsight is twenty twenty, right? You, you, you're operating in life without a map and you're just trying to do what you think is right every day. And just like everybody else, I mean, uh, uh, they're just trying to do the right thing. Um, and, and so, um, you know, it's gathering up experiences and meeting people, like you said, and, and trying to add value as much as possible. And, and then just identify like self-awareness, you know, identifying what are you afraid of and, and what's holding you back. And, um, if it's, if it's something that is manageable, maybe, maybe go for it, you know, give it a try and, and see what happens. And if you fall on your face, I mean, you just, it's funny, you know, <laughs> you just laugh at it because what the hell? I mean, nobody knows what they're doing. Awesome. And, and that kind of leads us into the next question. Says a man who has had so much success, like four years, I think it's four years of the virtual uh, 10 bound sales development conference. What would you say are the best resources that have helped you along the way as you take this entrepreneurship route? Yeah, I mean, um, so it's funny. Somebody said, I'm the only one who has a, a paid YouTube account. Um, oh. and, and literally, I, 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 I absolutely love it. I mean, I, I pay a subscription to get rid of any of the advertisements and free rolls and stuff like that. And I literally think like, you, you, um, and don't quote me because I, my kids might hear, but you don't even really have to go to college anymore. I mean, you, like if you get a good guide, and you know what you're looking for, like everything's on YouTube. <laughs> like, so, um, you know, I, I look at like, like I said, Jim Rohn, um, there's a guy named Dan Sullivan, um, who runs a company called Strategic Coach, which, um, you know, you, you look him up on YouTube and you just have learned so much from the guy. Um, and I consider like, you know, the typical gurus like uh, Gary Vaynerchuk and Grant Cardone and um, all those guys to be my mentors because I hang out with them every day and I, I listen to their strategies. Um, and the, the other quick tip for people is, um, you know, like an SDR, if you want to learn more about that industry, but you're just super intimidated or you just need help, just take, take an older or more experienced person out to lunch or a cup of coffee and just ask questions. Just ask open-ended questions. How did you, like what you guys are doing, you know, how did you get to where you're at? Um, where, where, you know, what, what did you learn along the way? Like, what, what advice would you have for me? And, and just let them open up and, and talk about it. And then if they give you some advice, take it um, and then report back to them and say, hey, dude, I did like two or three of these things and here's what happened. Uh, nobody ever does that. So that will really get you in with them. And then ask them, you know, hey, who should I be talking to, you know, in your network um, about, you know, this and who could I potentially learn from? I mean, not only will you learn a bunch of stuff, um, but you'll make friends and have build relationships with, with people who have connections that could potentially open doors for you. So, and that's, that's a, like some great advice. I mean, I'm kind of speechless because that's like really taken from the heart, right? And that's exactly what I want our audience to do today, right? So we always like to end with like a call to action. Call to action is to go follow David on LinkedIn. That's the first thing you should do. The second thing you should do is personalize a message and connect with him and pick his brain. Um, but also, and David, I want to give you the floor here is your sales development conference that's coming up. Can you guys, can you give us, you know, what, what, what should the audience expect and, and how they can sign up? Yeah, absolutely. So just go back and hit the 10 bound uh, website <laughs> and there, there's, there, there's a bar there. Jump on the newsletter for, for updates and, um, yeah, check out, check it out. I mean, the, the, um, the group of people that we've put together as speakers for this are just amazing. Um, they're all running uh, huge sales development programs or CMOs and CROs and people like that who are, uh, this is more of a leadership you know, level conference. And then we're gonna do another one in August that has very specific training tracks. Um, and you can hit that one up as well because they're, they're both free. So yeah, I'm just excited, man. I mean, like I said, just going back to the beginning, like I was stoked to, to find out about sales development and I always wanted to do something like this when I was a sales rep. Um, and um, in the past we had like predictable revenue, the book 
and um, Aaron Ross, you know, and a couple of blog posts and that was it. But now there's, you got your podcast, we got a bunch of information. You can learn a ton of stuff online and we're in way better shape than like 10 years ago. It's so great. I'd love to hear it. Uh, Andy, any closing thoughts? No, it's a, that, that was brilliant. Thanks again for coming on the show. What you shared was, was invaluable, kind of definitely resonated with me and Marcos and I'm sure with a lot of the uh, of our SDR audience as well. Awesome. You got it, man. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to the SDR Live podcast. If you like this episode, please share, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you tune in next week and have a fantastic week.